Okay, welcome everyone to Distortion Gems, episode number five. I uh, thought I was going to hide our special guest, but I totally forgot about that. So <laughs> there he is. Uh, so I'm here. Superstar Deke is here, and our super guest star, Jax, is here. And in this episode, we are going to be talking about concerts we all went to. Well, most of us went to a concert. Some of us uh, almost went to a concert. <laughs> um, but yeah, Deke, you went to see Iron Maiden in Toronto. Uh -huh. Jax, you went to see Sebastian Bach in somewhere on the East Coast. Where, where, where are you from? <laughs> Moncton. Moncton and Brunswick. Moncton. Okay, yeah. well, that's good. There's a, That's some good trivia. <laughs> and uh, I'm here in Sudbury, Ontario, and I was going to drive down to Aurelia, and I was going to see uh, Sarah McLaughlin. And uh, sadly, she had to cancel her entire tour due right. to uh, some vocal issues. She had some laryngitis, and it got really serious. At uh, yeah, she was. It was like day to day kind of thing. As we were getting closer and closer to the show, she was canceling this show and that show, and then eventually, about seventy two hours before we were supposed to drive down to Aurelia, she just canceled the whole tour. So. Must be pretty bad for her to do that. I'm pretty sure that no one was more disappointed that the, the concert was canceled or the entire tour was canceled than she is. But, you know, whatever she needs to do to uh, to get well. So on the 0% chance that she sees this, I just hope that she gets better. And, uh, yeah, and it's been postponed. So that means that she'll be coming back at some point and uh, we'll be able to uh, arrange to get the get the – tickets again or we i guess we still have tickets but you know arrange to get the hotel and all that by the way if you ever do uh you know uh, need a hotel in that and you ever wonder about uh, trying out expedia i got to give them a thumbs up because when i went to cancel it was zero problem no issues at all nice was done within seconds and i was like wow that was a huge huge relief because i wasn't sure how that was going to work out so there's a plug for expedia for no reason there we go. Maybe we'll right. get him on. Not a sponsor. Maybe, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe we can get him on as a sponsor now. We'll get them and Audible and uh, I don't know. What other what sponsors are there? Um, skip the dishes. Skip the dishes. All that stuff when you hear a podcast. Okay. So enough of the, the sad stuff. Let's get to the people who actually went to shows. Um, so, Deke, I guess we'll start uh, with you. Okay. Because uh, you know we got to save our, our special guest star to last. So that's right. He's the headliner on this. Yeah, episode. that's <laughs> right. I bet you Sebastian Bach would love that if he was a headlining over Iron Maiden. That would be. I mean, his career is shot right up. Some really good things have happened for him. Yeah, yeah, it would be. So yeah, back on uh, October twenty sixth, Iron Maiden rolled into uh, Toronto, played uh, Scotia Bank Arena. Packed it out, sold out at I think thirteen five, almost fourteen thousand, and um, it was what you expect from Maiden. You know, huge stage, the backdrops, impressive sound and lights, and lots of movable parts, which is what uh, my wife Sue, who went with me to the show, which um, she's not an Iron Maiden fan, she doesn't know their songs. She doesn't know any of the guys in the band other than Bruce Dickinson. So, and beforehand, I didn't tell her that they have some long songs. Sometimes they have three guitar solos in songs. And, you know, I didn't tell her anything. So she totally went in with a, a total open mind. And um, when all was said and done, she loved it. She thought it was a great show because the movable parts, you got Eddie, you got Smoke, you know, you got, you know, just a ton of stuff. And I mean, she didn't say anything about Yannick Jerry's prancing around on stage or any of that. She just thought they were super energetic. And um, I think that was um, really cool to, I mean, I go in there as a total fanboy every time I go see them. But for somebody to go in not knowing anything, it was basically just going to hang out with me. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> hey, okay. And uh, the opener was a Mongolian metal band called The Hue, H-U. And they've been touring with Maiden as their opener all through North America. So they were to go on at 7.30. And come 7.30, they're still blasting 
socks and wheels of steel through the pay eight PA bins and at 740 there's motorhead with ace of spades blasting and a quarter to eight and it's another metal song and 10 to eight's another metal song and sue goes i thought this was supposed to start at 7 30 and i said yeah and the funny thing was they killed the stage lights hmm. so you know you're kind of like waiting waiting and then finally eight o'clock they announced that the who were not making it that their bus broke down and they were a no show, but that the show is going to continue on. Ah, I sure as hell hope so. <laughs> so you didn't, you, you didn't get to see the, the so they're the hue, not the who, not the who, hue. Not, yeah, with H U. Okay, okay. Yeah, you can go on YouTube and actually they've done a maiden. Uh, they did a maiden cover of the Trooper. It's different. Oh yeah. Um, my brother caught this maiden show in Denver about a week before. And he texted me from the show saying that, he goes, that opening band, The Who, it sounded like one big long song. And I think what he meant by that, as he explained to me later, was it's like they have the same beat running through their tunes kind of thing, eh? But I mean, it's not for everybody, but you know what? Like I said, like with Sue going with an open mind, I was willing to go with an open mind and give him a shot, but didn't happen. And so Sue said, well, you know, it's 8.30. You think they'll come on early? I said, no, Maiden doesn't operate like that. They come on at 9 o'clock all the time. That's their, They don't start at 9.05. They don't start at 9, 8.55. They start at 9 on the dot. And at 8.55, there was Dr. Doctor being piped over the PA by UFO, which is, you know, if you're out in the lobby, man, get your ass to your seat because they're coming on. And, uh, yeah, they came on and they opened up with Caught Somewhere in Time and followed that up with Stranger in a Strange Land. And as all you Maiden fanatics know out there, Caught Somewhere in Time hasn't been played since 86. And Stranger in a Strange Land, the second tune, probably maybe a few times, but certainly not recently. And um, that was the draw for me was this album, Somewhere in Time. You know, such a great record. I know me and Jax, we did it on the throwdown. I think you gave it a 10, right? Yeah, I feel like I did. I love that album. The 10, yeah. And um, so they did those two. They did Heaven Can Wait, um, Stranger in a Strange Land, da, 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 uh, Wasted Years. And um, yeah, so they basically did half half the record, I believe. And I'm losing track of my songs here. What uh, so what was the tie-in for this uh, tour? Like, what were they promoting? Was there anything, or they were just yep, the popular? future past? And before I forget, okay. Alexander the Great. Oh, was the other one I hadn't played since '86. That was the other one. It was wow. like a lot of people were there to hear that because it's it like went bonkers when they went into that. It's like the most um, requested Maiden song for like yeah. decades, right? Yeah, exactly. So they did five from Somewhere in Time. And they did five from their current album, Sujensu. So that's why they call it Days of the Future Past. I see. Uh, so, and I have to say that between the Legacy of the Beast tour and this one, I've heard about seven songs now live through the last two tours of the Sujensu songs. And they come across really good live. I mean, they work, they know how to sequence and pace their show. So, you know, it's Maiden, right? They'll play a couple, they start off with a couple old ones, then they go into a couple of new ones, then they go into, you know what I mean? They kind of, they kind of flip flop. So they, they went, you know, they did three right off of uh, Sujensu. They did the writing on the wall, uh, Days of the Future Past and the Time Machine, all great tracks. Then they went old school. They went right into The Prisoner. And, and right. Um, right. the place went, you know, bonkers for that. And then they went into a, uh, another Sinjensu track, um, Death of the Celts. And they did that one. And then, boom, they went into Can I Play With Madness? And then did Heaven Can Wait. And they did Alexander the Great. And the best thing about Alexander the Great was there was this dude sitting down in front of me. Showed up wearing a cashmere sweater. Right? <laughs> and he was just he was vibing and chilling. But as soon as they went into Alexander the Great, 
up went the horns. <laughs> throwing it. And I thought, good on you, pal. Like, you know, that's what he was waiting for, man. Like, I thought that was so cool. And that, like I said earlier, that was a song they haven't played since 86. And every tour that they've been on since 86, everybody in the forums and, you know, play. How come they're not playing Alexander? Play Alexander Great. Da, da, and they never did. But they, they listened and, um, yeah, you know what? They nailed it out of the park. You know, Bruce hitting a gong at one point, and you think about Nico McBrain on the drums, right? The guy had a stroke, and yet yeah. he's playing these songs with these crazy tempo changes. Like, listen, to Alexander the Great during the guitar breaks, where it's just Harris and the drum, dun, 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 and then it goes into a solo, and then dun, 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 into another solo. Like, if he goes off the rails, I think they would all go off the rails. Like, you know, like phenomenal drummer still and i think he's what 72 so from there they did fear of the dark and then they closed out their regular set with what maiden and from that we went into the encore which was uh, another new track from sujensu called hell on earth which is the last song on the album and i have to say that i'd have to put that in my all-time top 10 Steve Harris written tracks. Oh, wow. One of his best written tracks, I think. It's such a such a killer. I mean, it's 10 minutes, but he keeps it. It's a typical Harris song, right? It's slow, 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 builds, 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 just keeps going, keeps going, and then kind of slows down at the end. But it, it is so good. And Dickinson nails the vocal. And, um, yeah, it's such an awesome added feature. And they they have a ton of fire going off in it at a certain point of the song and um that's the other thing too they've kind of slowed down on ripping a ton of pyro during the show obviously when they hit the stage boom there's pyro and uh, at the end of iron maiden boof a big blast of pyro but they weren't shooting off on a pyro so you know they had smoke and whatnot and the stage presentation was super cool too you know it was like the whole somewhere in time vibe and they had their backdrops you know like when they went into for instance the trooper you know they had that big uh canvas backdrop behind the drums of the trooper and you know they would switch it up every couple of tunes and they ended the show with uh wasted years oh i'm and, just gonna uh, share some of the sure the, the uh, photos that you took yeah because you were talking about the backdrop and that so I might as well might as well show it. Might as well show it and see uh, what you're talking about. So, yeah, I, I did notice that there was, like, uh, when you sent me these photos, there's a lot of different colors in that happening. Mm -hmm. uh, that's so cool. Yeah. And there's oh, Eddie. That's uh, Stranger in a Strange Land. Eddie just comes out for a short appearance at the end, and then he just goes off. And he has... It was kind of hilarious because I know <laughs> the best thing about it was I noticed that Sue was even taking video and pictures. So I thought, oh, this is a win-win, winner-winner <laughs> and dinner. So, <laughs> Those were your seats there? Yeah. Wow. Like you, you guys zoomed in pretty pretty good with those cameras. Like That was just your phone? That was just phone? me. This is, yeah, that actually Sue took that shot. It's a really and, nice uh, shot. Yeah. I would use that as my background on, on Facebook or something like yeah. this. Well, damn, Kev, I'll get her to sell it to you. <laughs> <laughs> what NTF or whatever those are? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's and, what I talk about the different colors and that. Like everything's green now. And, and that. You see, that's, yeah. that's the that's the fear of the dark backdrop. Fear of the dark, right? Yeah, yeah. That's really nice. Yeah, yeah look at it. like they. I, I like Maiden seems to like like to fill like a lot of the stage with stuff. For yep. you to look at, you know, and I think that's what drew Sue in as well. Yeah, was stuff like that. It was very colorful, right? Mm. Oh, and now we're at the videos here. This is Alexander the Great. Or here, let me. Uh, great. <laughs> well, let me let me share the. I'll, I I have to share the videos in a different way so you can hear them. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna. Do, this is. Um, all right, I'll play that one. Is that is that too loud or? That's no, perfect. Okay. Yeah, 
there seems to be quite a bit of pyrotechnics going on. You, you said there wasn't a lot, but <laughs> look at all that going on. Yeah, <laughs> they really toned it down. Yeah. <laughs> look at all That's that. Basically, the big production song. <laughs> all I see is fire. Oh, there's yeah. not much pyro. He says, "Not much pyro this <laughs> this time around." Yeah, but Bruce C sound like uh, from, from, from these uh, clips that you said, Bruce sounded really good. Yeah. All right, let me uh, stop that. I don't want to get a uh, copyright strike or anything like that. Oh, good point. I, I don't know if that I don't I, I don't know if live uh, stuff like okay. that gets gets hit. I don't know. Hard to say. They're kind I of. Think uh, her, uh, I think with our twenty thousand views per shirt per show, we might get a strike. <laughs> uh, you, you never know. <laughs> okay, here's some. Um, oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> now, when I I saw them, this is when Eddie came out. When I saw him in two thousand nine. And he came out in that that uh, outfit, yeah, with the big uh, British flag, and then he had like a fight with Bruce Dickinson. It was good. Good time. Yeah, the crowd seems to be really into it. Look at that! Everyone's Look at it. that, man. Who took this video? Was this you or Sue? That was me. Oh, okay. I was going to compliment the video, but it was, it was you. <laughs> Very cool. They look. They just look like a. They're all having fun. You know. Yeah. They're so youthful. So youthful. Yeah. Full of energy. You know, like. And they're they're. Yeah. How old are they now? <laughs> oh, I think. Well, I think Bruce Dickinson just turned sixty-six, and I think Nick was seventy-two, and I think they all fall in that. Yeah, that range. That so, was my guess. Yeah, late sixties, early seventies. So, but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a show of the ages, and you know, I've had like a few people. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to see their last five tours, and yeah, how many times have you seen them live? This uh my fifth time, yeah. Fifth time. Sixth time. Sixth time. Sixth. But um somebody... so which, which show which shows have you seen? Can you can you like like which uh which tours? Yeah, which uh, tours? Uh made in England. Oh wow that was eighty eight? Eight. Um no, that was the two thousand and twelve. Uh oh. Oh um the remake. Oh okay. And, uh, Book of Souls. Uh Legacy of the Beast twice and this one. So five times. Okay. But um yeah, and that's what somebody said, well, like, was this your favorite show? And I said, with me, it's maiden all their shows have been this. I there I've always found something on I didn't say, well, they were better than last time or better than you know, like when I saw them with Maiden England, they were playing stuff like the Clairvoyant and um, moon child and stuff like that and you know a whole different stage presentation book of souls same thing right they did that whole mayans egyptian theme and um or sorry mexican theme and uh you know is it, it was very well done legacy of the beast you know the first time i saw them they open with aces high they come out with the the plane flying over the stage right covid shuts down everything they come back to finish up legacy of the beast i go back there they are playing aces high at the end of the show with the with the bomb with the plane above them, right? Like they just kept mixing it up and they mix up the songs. And sure you're gonna hear Fear of the Dark and Iron Maiden and the, the usual stuff, but you know, I thought this set list of this show really is what sold it on me, you know, was just the fact to hear caught somewhere in time, Stranger in a Strange Lion, Alexander the Great, you know, like who knows? They might I mean they're already planning their next stadium tour next year and they're calling it um i don't know i can't remember the name of it but they're just saying that some of these songs are never going to play again 
Yeah. And basically like a greatest hits tour or something to that effect. So you just never know. But um, I'll finish up with, and Kevin will fill in for me. Kevin, what do I like to do when I go to shows? Uh, you like to get naked. <laughs> Merch. <laughs> Show canceled. <laughs> okay. You like to go to the merch table and buy stuff. And keep my clothes on. <laughs> yes. And uh but yeah, so when me and Sue got to Scotia Bank, there was this huge ass lineup on the first level. And I said to Sue, man, I'm glad I don't drink anymore. Because all these guys are probably waiting for beers. Uh-uh. That was the merch line. Wow. I walked around back end of Scotia Bank, another massive line. I remember going there a few years ago. We saw Maiden last time in Toronto with T-Bone and my buddy Metal Todd. We ended up going up to the third level and getting through pretty quick. So I said to Sue, yeah, you want to go for a walk? And so we went for a walk and I got through the merch line in about 10 minutes. And they had all the same stuff. It was just less people. And uh, it all worked out. And the real kicker was I got three shirts to show you. The first one being is that Sue wanted a shirt. And this is what the one that she got. You guys see oh, it there? Oh, yeah. that's so cool, yeah. Yeah. It's a combination of all albums. The back. Prince. I mean, uh, total score when, uh, you know, she said, you know what, I'll take number three. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> So all good. And, uh, and of course I had to buy a couple, which Kevin Jex know that this is what I do when I go to these things. And this is the first one I got. I liked it cause it was on green. Oh yeah. Oh dude. Can't go wrong. And this is total retro. Oh, that's cool. Very so nice. it's actual tour shirt from 86, 87 with, uh, the European, uh, dates. But I like the fact that it was on the green. Yeah, it looks great on green. And, little change, little change from always black. Yeah, oh, awesome. and the last one I got is just like last time when I went and seen Maiden, they played Toronto. Um, I think it was Hamilton and Ottawa, and this time they went to Toronto, Quebec City, and Montreal, and they made a Canadian event only T-shirt like they did last time, and this is the one they made for Toronto. Montreal and Quebec. Oh, <laughs> I That's like so it. Awesome. That's so awesome. And then on the back. Very cool. I wonder who's doing that artwork. I'm not, not sure. It's not rigs uh, anymore. All I know is a, is a quick tap of 200 bucks. Tap. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was the show, boys. We had a great time, and Sue loved it. And um, yeah, you know what? I think now that I got Sue on board, I think we might have to do a go see them a, a couple of times on the next go around. Are right. you're gonna do like uh, you're gonna follow them around like the Grateful Dead? You're gonna no, go not to Toronto. Then you're gonna go to Montreal. Then you're gonna go up to Ottawa, down uh, into New York. You know, if they were to play in around here, if they played Minneapolis and then went to Winnipeg, that would be doable. Because from when it, from here to Minneapolis is six hours, and from Minneapolis to Winnipeg, I think is eight or nine. So it's a little more feasible. Yeah. But there, I am already planning in my head their next tour. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, that was the show. We had a great time, and uh, it was made, and then they they delivered. Dickinson was. In fine form, as everybody knows, he doesn't use a teleprompter, and he still sings the Maiden's 80s stuff in the original. They play him in the original yeah. games, so yeah. he's not he's not cheating. And the funny thing is, you know, he's live when they did Stranger in a Strange Land. He went into the course accidentally when he was supposed to go into the pre-course, and he shifted within like a sentence, like he caught it right away. And I thought, freaking, that's just gold, like. He's such a pro. He didn't. You would have never known, but me being knowing the song, and a lot of yeah. people probably know it. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah, he did it. Because if he would have went off the rails, Harris would have been going, oh, "What's going on over there?" <laughs> 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 but yeah, so a lot of fun. We had a great time, and uh, yeah, thanks for listening to me, Babel. So, Jax, 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 who? 
All right. Well, hold on. Before before I go on, I got I got a couple of questions. So you said you saw Maiden five times. Huh? Kevin, how many times have you seen Maiden? Just the one time in the uh, one time, two thousand nine. Well. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's better than none. I, I haven't seen them ever at all, and they're like a bucket list band for me. And I'm like, I got to see them soon because you know they're not getting any younger, right? Yeah. Yeah. You better get but, moving on it. Oh man, but it's like they never, you know, they, they they never come to this this corner, man. They never come to the East Coast. I think the closest they usually come is like Quebec City. Which already is like an eight-hour drive, and you know, and you got the hotels and all that stuff. So, but I mean, you know what? One of these days, I'm gonna have to because I don't want to be there one day that's too late, and I never got to see Maiden because yeah, I feel like that's an experience. I I got to see Kiss one time, and I'm happy. You know, I'm like, okay, at least I saw them once. But I, Maiden is gonna have to be the same thing. I'm gonna have to see them at least once because I'm gonna kick myself if I don't. You know. Yeah, you will. I, I'm kicking myself over Tom Petty, so right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. So that's it true. happened. It's like, oh, I'll, I'll I'll get there the next time, and no, like, there is no next time. All of a sudden, so. yeah, that was, that was me with Rush, right? That's like, nope, can't now. Yeah, I I went to I took Sarah to see Rush in 2004, and we just, uh, you know, not thinking that we'd get there again at some point, but it just never came to be. So I'm just so thankful that we got. 2004 in at least yeah you know? oh totally yeah i'm the same i mean russia was uh you know tebow wanted to go and i said I, I don't know if i can really swing it back in 20 2002 on the vapor trails tour and oh maybe said, it's 2002 because yeah. i saw the same said, tour yeah he said no nah, man I, I got you covered and so yeah you know he he got me down here to see the show and thank god he did because yeah that was my only real opportunity to see them it was one of those things yeah i'll go see them next time especially in the 80s when they were so massive and they were always yeah. playing close by like minneapolis and stuff but you know we're going to see crew and all those other bands and da da da, da and rush would come by in the winter and it's like well we're not going to get down there in the winter ah, we'll go see them next time ah, yeah. you know how that goes yeah yeah, yeah. Right all right okay all right. Jax. let's talk let's talk about some bach so uh sebastian bach he came to Moncton. The first time he came to Moncton was six years ago. It was 2018, and I wanted to go. And then, you know, my wife and I were expecting our first child. It just it didn't pan out. I was like, ah, that's too bad. So then when they announced it, I think it was late summer, they announced that he was coming back, same venue at Casino NB. I didn't even have to think twice. I'm like, I'm not missing him again. I'm going. You know, so as soon as the tickets went on sale, I got my ticket. It turned out that um, our good friend Tim, Tim Durling from Tim's Vinyl Confessions, he was going too, and the whole crew from Tim's Vinyl Confessions, uh, Matt Phillips and uh, Will Loomis, they were all going. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was our first time actually meeting all. Like I had met Tim before, I met Matt, I met all of them before, but it was our first time all of us together. So it was a, it was a lot of fun. Good company. Um, I'll talk a little bit about. I don't before I keep going. I don't have as much to say as Deke. <laughs> like, really in detail Nobody like, has I, as much to say as Deke. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's the star of the show. No. <laughs> so, you know, it's going to be a little short and sweet, but I'll, I'll try to say as much as I can. Like that. I'll talk a little bit about the opening act, which I, I wasn't familiar with. It's this guy called Kurt Dimer. I had seen him. Uh, Sebastian had been posting on social media, um, you know, some stuff with him. So I, I didn't know who he was, so I didn't know what to expect, but it, it he kind of he kind of blew me away. I liked his, his his rock and roll, but the way he sings, he has this raspy voice, and he almost like raps as he sings. But it's, it's not rap music, but it's uh, it was interesting, and yeah, he was really uh, really good energy on stage. He uh, and uh, in his banter, he always uh, talked about like um, being kind to one another and positivity, and it was, it was just a good energy overall. And at one point, he just walked down and. You know, he had his, his portable mic and he's just walking in the crowd while he's singing. You know, he's going yeah. from person to person. So, yeah, I, I saw him come come to me. He just stopped right next to me. I took a selfie with him. You know, it's like, it, I don't know who this guy is, but I I, I like what, what he's doing. Um, and to compliment his his vocals, his bass player, he had like the really high-pitched backup vocals. And it, it, it was a cool blend, man. It was a cool blend. I, I checked a little bit out on Spotify the next day. And I got to say, live was a little heavier like i like there was this raw energy to the live versions not saying that the studio is bad but it, it is not quite the same so it's, uh, i'd recommend checking out live stuff from uh, from kurt dimer so anyway when he was done you know there was a little break for them to change the the technical stuff and here and here's what's uh, what's kind of funny is that i went to talk 
to this guy I went to high school with. I hadn't seen him in, in, in years, like over a decade. And it turns out he was going to the show. And he went to the same Maiden show as Deke in Toronto just uh, two, two days before. Because that would have been the 26th. And uh, yeah. yeah, and then the box show was the 28th. So he had flown to Toronto to see Maiden and then flown back to Moncton uh, for the box show. So he was uh, he was talking a lot of good things about that same show you went to. Nice. And, uh, so I talked to him for a bit and then the lights dim. So I go back to, to Tim and the crew. We were we were pretty close to the stage. We we're like not right at the stage, but we we're pretty uh, up front. So we hear the first few notes of uh, What Do I Got to Lose, which was a single from this album he's promoting. The child within the man, right. and uh, we're, the crowd's already like, -da 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 -da. and then Bach runs out, and the crowd just loses it just because he runs out like like high speed, he's like the hair, and he's like, yeah, Bachchan, and he takes the mic stand and just throws it, and you're like, holy <laughs> shit, this is like such a switch, <laughs> you know, because Kurt Dimer, like he had energy already, you know, but with Bach, it's just like. It's like full throttle. He cranks it up to 11, you know, and he goes from one side of the stage and he walks to the other. It just, you connect with the crowd immediately. And it, it's such a cool feeling. Like, yeah, you know, you can go see a show and the, you know, the performer will just sing and then barely say anything. And that's fine. You're there for the music, but it's fun when there's like connection, right? Yeah. And he'll, he'll talk, he'll talk between songs. Like, uh, actually, I didn't take any, any videos, but uh, Tim took quite a bit. So if you go to Tim's channel, you can see a lot of the banter and uh yeah it, it was fun he talked about a lot of things like because it's the canadian tour he talked about trailer park boys <laughs> which i gotta say i'm not it's not a show i've watched i know of it oh my goodness it, you're, you know? missing out. you're missing that's, out yeah, that's what they tell me i've tried it it, it never really clicked maybe someday but maybe I tried it. Locked in. it might hit too close to home yeah <laughs> yeah well yeah exactly it was, it was filmed in halifax was it Mm -hmm. uh, I think, yeah, like somewhere on on the uh, suburbs yeah. of in, in a trailer park outside yeah. of Halifax. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's all so, about uh, it's all about the model trains. Well, exactly. <laughs> I didn't get the reference, but because that's one of the first banders is like, "Hey, you guys like model trains?" <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I didn't get. I, I didn't really get it, but then as you went on, I, I kind of clued in. I'm like, oh, okay, this must be a trailer park voice. Like, <laughs> I, and I got it. I gotta say, like he was like his appearance on Trailer Park Boys was so memorable. It was like there's there's the Alex Lifeson episode and then there's yeah. the Sebastian Bach episode. Those two like are, are the best uh, uh, guest appearances on that show, hands down. Yeah, I, I, I went to watch it the next day. I will I will admit I went to because I'm like I gotta I gotta know what this is all about. So I went to watch his uh, his appearance and uh, he's cool, man. I love it when he pops up and stuff, man. Yeah. Even the Gilmore Girls. Hey, I got no shame. I watched the Gilmore Girls with my wife years ago, and he's he's on there the later season. I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Anyway, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's, it was it was cool, but like he really he connects with the audience. Yeah, and he he was throwing like water bottles in the crowd for people to drink. It's uh, I, I don't know what else to say, but it's uh, it, he, the the track list, like the set list was was really cool. I I didn't know what to expect. I knew there'd be some new stuff, and he played five songs from here which is more than I was expecting, actually. Um, he played nine songs from the Skid Row debut be to celebrate the 35th anniversary. And he, he did it with pride, too. He kept saying, like, this album's celebrating 35 years, man. You know, and uh, actually, like, the, the whole middle chunk of the set list is pretty much all, like, debut. So it's kind of, the, the, the sequencing was kind of odd, but not complaining because it's all familiar territory, right? So we, mm -hmm. we didn't care. He played two, uh, two songs from Slave to the Grind. Slave to the Grind and Monkey Business. And right in the middle of Monkey Business, they broke into Tom Sawyer by Rush. Oh, wow. Nice. I went, Tim Tim was like kind of in front of me. I just went to Tim like, you hear this? And then we're just like, because because uh, it, it takes you a second, right? Because you're not expecting it. It doesn't belong there. So you mm -hmm. just hear like, da-da-da-da. Uh, it's like, what the? <gasps> I'm like, it's Tom Sawyer, dude. And uh, that was his son you know, on drums, was uh, Sebastian's son. Uh, wow. Paris. He nice. Did a really good job. Sebastian was really proud of him, you can tell. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah. Okay. Speaking of the energy, this, I, I wrote I wrote a re review on this. Anyone who's interested, you can go down here to Excalibur WordPress. I have a really detailed, you know, with the band members' names and stuff. Uh, but one thing I didn't mention in my review is that, speaking of the energy, 
something he does. I don't know if it's his signature move, but he'll just take like the microphone wire and he'll just swing the microphone. He did that like yeah. two, three times. And on one point, man, I thought I, 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 I thought for sure he was going to wipe out his bass player. Like it was getting pretty, pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> it's just getting closer and closer or like i'm like man you better make sure that thing is plugged in tight because if that lets go that could hit an audience member and you got a lawsuit on your hands buddy but uh no all's well that ends well but uh yeah that's that's pretty much it i think i'm probably forgetting some stuff because i'm just going by memory here but uh uh yeah it's all it's, it's all out here I, I wrote a review uh it's a five out of five score for me like no complaints the energy was great the crowd was great everyone was having a good time uh, yeah it's uh yeah, it was a packed house it was pretty uh i mean yeah it was a decent not as much as i was expecting i mean it's not a great a big venue like like the arena where you were this is like uh in casino new brunswick it's like a like a ballroom i guess you could call it Okay. So it's, it had a, a bit of um, it was a little more intimate, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's some pictures that I took. Yeah, you, you got some really good shots here. Like you were pretty close. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, we were like I said, not front row, but not not too far behind. So um, yeah, yeah, we we could see, we, we saw everything. Oh, you could see in the back. That's like uh, the Skid Row, um, Sleep to the Grind yeah. album cover that was painted by uh, Sebastian's father, uh, David Birk. So uh, it was kind of cool walking in and seeing that. We're like, oh, nice, nice. There he is. That's his bass player, whose name is escaping me. Um, the band, the band was tight. Really, really good. Really good. The guitarist had some uh, difficulties during the song "Freedom," but it was resolved. And you can see, like Sebastian, professionals like, "Okay, stop the show. Stop the show. Let's let's figure it out." So he gave him some time. He talked with the audience while the the crew was, you know, resolving it. And then um, who are these guys? Ah, look at those handsome devils. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Tim's Vinyl Confessions crew. That's me, Tim, uh, Matt, and Will. Man, I hope we can and do that again, boys. Who's the dude in the back, Look man. at this guy, yeah. Where, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, unknown, photo bomb. <laughs> the unknown stranger. I, I have a question. Was, mm -hmm. uh, was the drummer, was he... Uh, did he have COVID? Is that why they put him behind glass there? I, I was wondering that too. I, I well, I assume maybe. I, I think it's an it's an audio thing. I'm just joking. Oh, maybe. Well, because <laughs> that actually crossed my mind. Like, is he? I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I don't think yeah. so though. Yeah, that'd be fun. Welcome to the distortion gems, Kevin <laughs> dry humor section of the show. <laughs> Can't help it. Yeah, so that, oh, that's, that's, that's cool. Thing. You know what? That, that's pretty kind of uh, that's kind of neat. Like, um, Bach, I mean, he, yeah, he's touring, he's smart enough that he's got a new album to plug, so he plugs it, but he's also smart enough to know. I mean, I did look at the set list because I was he was here about a week before I went to see Maiden, but mm -hmm. I just couldn't do it. Like, uh, yeah. it was just if I've seen, I don't, I've seen like I got lucky with it, seeing some good shows in September and October, so. One had to sign one had to be a sacrificial lamb and yeah and the box show was it but if I wasn't going to see Maiden I would have gone to see him here but I looked at the set list and yeah you know what that was a pretty decent set list he was doing I mean that's basically what people want to hear they want to hear eighteen in life and youth gone wild and yeah. uh, you know well, all that stuff that takes them back to that time it's no different than than seeing Maiden Maiden played current yeah. stuff but they also Played that stuff I was listening to when I was in grade twelve back in eighty six, right? Like, yeah. it's it's what takes you back in that memory somewhere in time. Yeah, I wasn't expecting so much from the debut. Like nine tracks out of yeah. like, there, there's eleven songs on the album, and you played nine. Basically, was, like, yeah, I'm surprised that you went a little light on Slave to the Grind because I mean, yeah, a lot of people are pretty big on that album. I I personally think that's one of their best ones too so i was expecting more but i mean he played like two of the you know he played the two first mm -hmm. two first songs so yeah you know you can't complain and and i'm you know the new album too which is kind of good because i'm i never really familiarized myself with his other solo stuff like this was his first solo album that i got uh, shout out to mike by the way mike ladano was kind enough to send me this uh, last summer so thank you mike but uh, i never checked out his, his other solo stuff so at least I was happy that everything he played, it's all stuff that I knew. So, um, yeah, we're singing along, man. It was, uh, it was great. Yeah. As long as you had a good experience and you had a good time, that's, that's what it's about, pal. Oh yeah, man. Did you swing by the merch table at all? Do you got any? 
How, how many shirts do you have? Uh, <laughs> no, no, I couldn't swing in shirts. We, we, we swung by. We took a look. There's some cool shirts. You know, they were like 50 bucks a piece, mm. which is great, basically the, the the standard of the merch tables. They had some hoodies too, but I, I, I just couldn't swing. I don't think I don't think any of us bought any any merch. Uh, Jax, the problem was Jax didn't go naked. <laughs> yeah, you need to buy clothes, right? When you go naked. <laughs> I was running through Scotiabank topless. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold in here. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think uh, Bach came like a few days after he was in Thunder Bay. He came through uh -huh. Sudbury. And I was in the same boat as you, Deke. I had just seen a whole bunch of concerts uh, in, in the summer. And then we had Sarah McLaughlin coming up and uh, The Watchmen coming up. We were supposed to see The Watchmen at the end of this month. And, and it was just like, oh, Bach, that's just too much. And then mclaughlin canceled and then the watchman canceled too oh no <laughs> yeah so i'm like i'm like uh, uh I, I like the last concert i've seen now is back in i guess uh august or july now so why why did the watchman cancel uh one of their members has uh some health uh, issues mm -hmm. and uh it, that's all we know is that he has some health issues and uh they they are rescheduling as well they'll they'll be coming back in uh in the, the summer at some point in June, I think they rescheduled for it. So that's a good sign that it's not anything too yeah. crazy if they're planning on coming back. So yeah, let me know the date. Uh, it's June something. I can't remember exactly what, but it's not here in Sudbury. They're, they're oh. in, um, we, yeah. So my, uh, so Sarah, my wife, she uh, has a, a, a high school friend, high school college friend, uh, and uh, they you know, they went to college together in London. And anytime the Watchmen came through town, they would go and and see them. And they saw them oh, like, nice. I don't know about five times uh, back then. And then the Watchmen kind of called it quits for about twenty years or whatever. And then about ten years ago, uh, they were performing. They were going to perform one show in Toronto. So her and her friend got together and they went to see the one show, and that was supposed to be it. But then they just started uh, doing that one show about once a year <laughs> and right. down in Toronto. Yeah. So they try to get together. Like, I don't, I think the last time Sarah saw her was before the, the pandemic. Okay. Uh, so like 2019. So, and then, you know, keep in, you know, like we were moving, you know, uh, and, and then we were selling her, her parents' house. So like, there was always something, you know, so this was supposed to be, this was it. We're going to get back into the, into the swing. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't know, just kind of having a little bit of bad luck with the, with the shows lately. Yeah, it's it sucks with the cancellation slash postponements. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, but they happen. Sign of the times now. I mean, that's the way it goes. I mean, the Watchmen. You know, I think I last saw them at the back end of the '90s when they came to town with uh, opening. Or no, they did a co-headline with Big Wreck. Oh wow! And um, oh, when Big Wreck awesome. played here a year ago, Danny Greaves opened for Big Rack by himself on a piano. Oh, wow. And uh, it was phenomenal. And he was really good. He just walked up on stage and started tinkling the ivories. And uh, at one point he's playing, it was Thorry Thunder Bay, hold on a second. He pulls out his phone and he goes, Mom, I'm playing a show right now in Thunder Bay. I'm going to have to call you back after. Like, so was just there, and he put the phone away and then he can, <laughs> that's, that's how awesome. you know it's live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, he was he was really good, really good talent. So yeah, hope hope it works out for uh, Sarah. Yeah, I mean, we shall see. We shall see yeah. what happens. Yeah. Um, but before we run out of time, I yeah. I might not have had uh, luck lately um, uh, at seeing shows, but the mail has been good to me lately. And uh, this is a special bonus for people who watched our third episode of Distortion Gems. And uh, there was one, if you recall, in that third episode, I had gone to the Sudbury uh, record show, record and collectibles show. And there was one album that uh, Deke and I talked about quite a bit, extensively. Yes. Uh, but I did not buy it. It was an album that we talked about, but I did not buy it. Do you remember what album that was, uh, Deke? I sure do. You do. Oh, are, yeah. are, you, are you? Have you been let in on this? Do you know what this is? Let's just say first letter starts with L. Uh, yeah, you're correct. Somebody, somebody <laughs> tipped you off. I was going to surprise you. Yeah. So uh, 
I was talking about the Less Than Zero uh, soundtrack, and uh, Jax was nice enough to send me, as a placeholder until I find the album, uh, the Less Than Zero soundtrack on on the cassette. Try to get that to focus. There we go. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, I did give it a listen, and I did listen to uh, Inagata De Vida by oh, a Slayer. So good. Yeah. <laughs> We were uh, we were making dinner one night and I and I put it on and uh, it's a very eclectic mix. You got oh. hip hop, you got poison yeah. covering Kiss, uh, all sorts of things. But it's it's a good times. It's a good it's a good listen. So I listened to that and then as a bonus, he threw in the the old Max Webster uh, greatest hits featuring oh, nice. uh, Kim Mitchell, yeah. which I do I did not have on any format. I got all the songs on other you know, on their albums and on yeah. CD and whatnot. But uh, yeah, now I got the, I got this collection. Yeah. It's a great collection. Starts off with check. I mean, how yep. can you go wrong? Check, yeah. check. Yeah. Check. No, it was a, it's a, it's a great, uh, from, from start to finish. I do not understand why kids in action, like why his solo slips yeah. in. I don't know if it's like, uh, I, they keep taking that solo EP and putting it in with Max Webster. And I'm not sure if it has something to do with like a record label deal or something. Cause you know, like when you would sign a record label, like especially back in the day, they would sign on and they would give uh okay, the band, you have to give us three albums and you know what, Kim, give us a solo album. And I don't know if that falls in there. Maybe that's why they keep, but anyways, maybe they, they lost, maybe they lost the original master. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. Like, why is it with the Max Webster catalog and not with the Kim Mitchell catalog? That's that's the part that I don't I, like. Like the the party uh, greatest hits, or sorry, the party box set that has all the Max Webster albums on it and the Kim, Kim Mitchell EP. I, I never like. Mm. And to me, like like Kim Mitchell's solo stuff is different like really different from max webster it's not like tom petty where the lines are constantly blurred as to what's tom petty and what's tom petty and the heartbreakers yeah you know like i hear kim mitchell and that's kim mitchell it's not max webster but right. anyways who knows? nitpick city who cares it's <laughs> it's great from start to finish so thank you so much sir i i really appreciate yeah. that yeah you're welcome i when i heard you talk about it i'm like i, I have a cassette i i don't I don't have a player really to play cassettes right now. It's just collecting dust. I'm like, you know what? You have it until you find a, an affordable vinyl copy. At least you can listen to it. And, yeah. And, and then, then Jax wants his tape back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> I'll send it on back. Yeah, it's, just sure it's just a loan. It's just a Jax already knows that when I say I'm going to send him something, he's going to be waiting a long time. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad for that, too. Well, th there's a thing that I want to send him, and it's it's under the stairs. It's back in there somewhere, and I have to – like, it's going to take me a whole day to get to it. So I need that whole day where there's nothing going on where I can go under the stairs and find find that thing. I didn't realize it was so much work. It, it is. It's, it's, <laughs> it's like, it sounds like I should just to me. It, I, I have – I should just send you the CDs already because those are just, like, sitting on my shelf. I should send you that, but that there's there's something else. It's, it's there, but anyways, I'm intrigued. I think that's the show. I think we've uh, said it all. Uh, yep. You know, go see Iron Maiden when you get the chance. Don't be like Deke and I. Go see Sebastian Bach when you get the chance. And uh, if your show gets canceled, just hang in there. <laughs> it might, it might happen. You never know. Might happen. So, hey, Jax, uh, thanks for hopping on with us tonight, and. Uh... Thanks you're, for always having welcome. Me guys. you're always welcome back here in the the jam den. Appreciate yes. it. Oh, I got I forgot to show it off. I'm wearing my I got dressed up for. Oh wow! This, this is a this is a um, very rare I think two of a kind T-shirt because there's only I have one. I think Deke has the other one, and that's about it. So wow, that's, that's all you need. I'm that's wearing cool. it with pride, man. In other words, Kevin's saying I I might need a rag to wash my car. Sometime. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Um, get framed i'd put that up that, on. i think uh, me and uh jex are gonna get a couple episodes going of the retro throwdown we haven't done an episode since january february oh, yeah if not yeah i don't know if it's been a year yet but it's, it's been close to a year so, uh, far we're, working too late. so we're working far on a date so heads up folks we're coming back with a bunch any indication on what uh record might be going head to head which records are going head to head jex you want to say oh 
Are we gonna wow. get the exclusive here? Right on. Exclusive right here. Yeah, I want, I, I'll, I'll say one, you say the other. Let's make it right. fair here. So the first album is uh, Sliding In by White Snake, old Whoa. school White Snake. So the next one, the other album has to be from 1987, right? Is that, are you sticking to that rule or? Actually, it's from 84. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're we're it from 84? I don't, yeah. I, I don't know Not, anything okay. about White Snake. That's a, I'm and sorry. it's going head to head against a band that uh, White Snake was opening for, and that's Quiet Riot with Condition Critical. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to throw it down with that one, and then at that time, we'll figure out what we're going to do for another episode. Yeah. But, we, yeah. We, we got a list. It's just a matter of deciding which ones. Yeah. And, uh, well, we just got to find that list now. <laughs> I have it. I have it. But yeah, I have, so got, I have a White Snake album from 1987. Is that just the plain White Snake one? It's just called White Snake. Yeah. Self titled. Okay. Yeah, that, that's that's, that's yeah. the big one. Yeah, that's oh, really okay. Yeah. Still of the night, and uh, here I go again. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's well, I'm going to call it Slide It In because <laughs> I, I just want to be right. <laughs> yep. You know what? We'll just let you be right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for watching this episode. Thank you, Jex, for joining us, and. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe because we don't set a schedule and you don't want to miss anything. You can't just like, you know, look at your calendar and say, okay, in two weeks, there's going to be another episode. You don't know when there's going to be another episode. So there you go. That's my hook. That's my plug. That's it. Oh yeah. Jax, is there anything you want to plug other than the website? Anything else? Anything got coming up? Uh, You know what? I've been pretty quiet lately. I don't have a lot going on. It's good. But- uh, you know, it's the same thing as you guys. My uh, yeah. website is any any time. It could be any time. Okay. I'm gonna drop something. I probably be dropping something tomorrow um, for a certain anniversary, and uh, I'm gonna keep it at that. Okay. Well, uh, if you're a Jex fan, you got something to read tomorrow, and then and then rest. You can get to rest. <laughs> you're busy. You're busy. Your Jex fans are busy, and they need some time off. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of time off, cut. Goodbye, everybody.